Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back uh, to Just Law on Nikra TV. Now, just before the break, we were discussing uh, Brexit and the different types of um, regulations for travelling to Europe, alternatively Europeans travelling to England. And uh, in essence, what we've discussed so far is that prior to travelling, if you are travelling for less than 90 days, you should be free to travel. And if it's a case that you intend to travel to the European country for more than 90 days, then you may have to contact the specific country's embassy or alternatively go on to gov.uk and have a look as to whether or not you need to apply. If you intend to work out there, you will need a work permit or you will need a visa to allowing you to work. If you intend to do business out there, selling a product that's manufactured in the United Kingdom down there, then you will need some... Um, some further information. Assalamu alaikum, Kala. Uh, wa alaikum assalam. Um, I just have a quick question regarding this uh, settled status uh, which you can get um, of, uh, according to the EU regulation. Yes. So if someone has a settled, full settled status and they decide to leave the UK, for how long this settled status remain valid? And if they come, because I've heard different things, some said two years, some said three years, some said five years. Um, and whatever the term is, is, if within that term, if that person returns to the UK just to visit the family, is that five years will just get revalidated? Uh, how, how that system works, if you can explain that. Jazakallah exactly for the uh, question. Insofar as um, the uh, two different um, uh, positions, there's pre-settled status and there's also settled status. And... Um, Insofar as the two differences uh, are concerned, insofar as the pre-settled status is, it means that the European national has not resided in England for a period exceeding five years. So uh, making these applications, you can make these applications on the government website. And if there's any European within um, the United Kingdom that's living with family, working here, etc., then they can make an application as long as they're entered the country prior to 31st of uh, December 2020 and they can show that they entered the United Kingdom, uh, Great Britain, prior to the 31st of December 2020, then they're eligible to make an application. The deadline for the application was extended to 30th of June 2021. Therefore, any Europeans who have attended England prior to the 31st of December can make an application for either a settled status or a pre-settled status. Now, insofar as the settled status is concerned, you've provided the evidence which has been accepted by the government that you've resided here for a period of five years. And uh, the question uh, was, if the European leaves the country and then does not return back into the country for a period of, let's say for argument's sake, a year or two years, then what happens um, to that status? My understanding is the settled status uh, uh, is like indefinite leave to remain. Um, you have it and it's there and it, uh, it gives you the entitlement to uh, reside uh, here. And then so long as this is your main residence in England, then you are free to uh, go back and come back here. If there's a break longer uh, than necessary, and I will have to come back to you uh, with how long that period is, uh, whether it's, uh, like you say, two years or three years. If you tune into the show next week, and then I'll uh, provide the information uh, to you. But my understanding is that as long as United Kingdom is your main residence and you've gone to the European country or gone to Asia, for argument, say Pakistan, um, uh, for a period which has been extended, as long as you can still show that the United Kingdom is your main residence and you reside here and then you'll be able to argue that you are entitled to stay here. That will um, have its own uh, caveats. Let's say for argument's sake um, there's a family, um, the husband decides to go uh, back to uh, Germany or go back to Pakistan. The wife and the children are living here. They all had settled status in the United Kingdom. Father comes back uh, and then he will be entitled to, under human rights, make arguments that, wait a minute, 
I left the country, uh, but all of my family is here, or my business or my work is still here, it's still available for me, and you should be able to um, argue along those lines. However, I will come back to you next week. Alternatively, if you want to call the uh, control room, leave your number, and then what I'll do is I'll contact you back once I've just found out what the position is uh, to see whether or not a significant gap, if there is a gap of uh, more than, let's say, a year, two years, three years, or six months, what the time frame is and uh, what you will have to show the government if you want to maintain the settled status. Um, thank you for that. Um, now, we were discussing the, um, the settled... Um, uh, status uh, applications majority of our viewers would have made those applications by now if you've not made those applications it's quite important that you make either a settled or a pre-settled uh, status application it's a relatively straightforward application that you can make you don't need a solicitor to make that application you can speak to someone as long as you've got a sound understanding of how to use um, an internet browser to upload a photograph and uh, to be honest with you, you should be able to uh, complete the application. Some people who have attended here, they've not been able to um, get a job for argument's sake. As long as you've got a national insurance number, as long as you've got a tenancy agreement, etc., then you'll be able to show the pre-settled statement uh, status. Um, let's say for argument's sake, you attended on the 31st of December, and then you can show that, yep, prior to the 31st of December, I've come here, and then if you have a tenancy agreement of your property that you've taken out and then you've got a bank account that you've opened, you've made an application for a national insurance number, you can show all these documents. And then in 2026, when you've got the five years evidence that you've lived here for five years, then you'll be able to make an application for settled status. Now, the application for settled status is different to uh, nationality, etc. You'll still be a national of the country, the European country that you're in, uh, but you'll have a settled status in which you will have all rights and entitlements to live in the country, to apply for benefits, etc. And you'll be able to do everything uh, as you were able to do when uh, Great Britain was part of Europe. We have another caller. Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum uh, salam. Brother, I wanted to ask if uh, we had uh, come into UK five years back, yes. and we had uh, our what we call financial support, so everything was okay. Yep. And after five years, when we have to apply for the indefinite, yes. We can't make that uh, 18,600 requirement. What will happen to that uh, spouse visa? You will have to make a temporary extension on the visa. Um, and then after you've made that temporary, you're going to have to um, meet the requirements, the income requirements, and then uh, apply for the um, uh, full visa. Okay. Yep. So for the temporary, is it necessary we have to apply for that financial uh, amount? For, for the 18,600? Uh, no. Yeah. No. You, you can apply for a temporary extension because of uh, currently the rules are quite relaxed because of COVID, because last year a lot of people have lost their jobs, etc. And then yeah. you'll be able to get an, another extension, a short extension, and then hopefully you'll be able to get another job and then you'll be able to apply um, for the full extension, whichever. Are you on the 10-year ten, ten route? Uh, I think it's five years route. You're, you're on the five years uh, route? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you, you want to apply for indefinite leave to remain now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you're going to have to uh, meet the uh, requirements, okay? Um, but... The, the best thing to do is apply for a temporary extension and then within that time frame then you'll have to meet the requirements and then apply again. Okay, fine. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Okay, wa alaikum assalam, jazakallah. So. Now we were talking um, uh, about the European um, uh, applications for the um, uh, settlement, the pre-settlement settlement statuses. 
Um, everyone's urged to make them applications if you've not made them already before the end of June. The extension is till the end of June and you will have to show um, the national insurance number, the, uh, the fact that you're living here, the fact that you've um, uh, got a job or something. And uh, it's quite important to uh, open yourself uh, a bank account, etc. as well. You need all the evidence to show that you've been living here five years. So for argument's sake, if you've attended now uh, in December 2020, then in December 2025, you're, you've uh, hit that five-year magic mark. And then you're going to have to show and you're going to have to provide documentary evidence. Now, the easiest documentary evidence is this is my uh, tenancy agreement. This is a bank account that I opened when I attended United Kingdom. And then provide five years of bank statements, council tax records, etc. And then you'll be able to show that you have been living here. And then if you've been working or whether you're a spouse, uh, etc., whatever the circumstances may be, uh, you can apply under uh, that front. Now, um, I will come back uh, to you to confirm how long that settled status lasts and what the position is. Now, the other uh, issue is if you are driving in uh, Europe um, uh, post-Brexit, then what the position is. Now, if you're taking your own motor vehicle uh, in Europe, then what you're going to need is uh, you're going to have to have a Great Britain uh, stamp. It can't have the European um, uh, stars on it like the previous one it can't be a european stamp it has to be a specific great britain uh, sticker either on your number plate or on the back of your vehicle um, you will also need um, a uh, a green card uh, from your insurance company to confirm that you have uh, the relevant insurance requirements uh, in order to uh, drive in uh, europe if you are uh, hiring a motor vehicle, once again, you're going to have to show that that vehicle is able to cover the third party risks in the European country. Now, um, insofar as taking food and drink into European countries, you're not able to take uh, meat, you're not able to take uh, milk products uh, into European countries now. Uh, the exemptions are baby, uh, baby milk, etc., um, pet food supplies or medical uh, supplies. Other than that, you're not allowed to uh, take any of those products. Um, taking plants and plant products into EU country, you're going to need a certificate in order to take those into the country. Um, and insofar as taking a pet with you, uh, you need at least a month. You need uh, animal health insurance now in order to take your pet with you, whatever that pet may be, a cat. Uh, dog, uh, etc. Now the other uh, question will be what will happen with um, free roaming uh, in the European countries. Previously we'd be able to take our mobile phone contract, we'll, be, we'll have uh, mobile data, we'll have telephone uh, data, etc. Each company is making their own rules regarding this, whether you're with EE, Vodafone, uh, etc. Yeah, your advice to contact them prior to traveling just to make sure that there's no roaming charges and if there is any charges then um, you should be looking at taking a, a product out in order to cover those costs alternatively use another sim when you get down there the last thing you want to do is start using your phone like pre-brexit and then get in a large bill um, now the other important thing is uh, a european health insurance card all of the viewers are urged to get an EHIC card, it's called, or a, a global health insurance card. Uh, these are free uh, cards. You don't need to pay for these. And uh, please be aware, if you go onto the internet and uh, apply for these, there are some companies who will charge you money, but don't go to them. If you go directly onto the gov.uk website, you'll be able to apply for an EHIC. Um, so that's uh, the European health insurance cards, which will cover you if you're involved in a medical emergency. And it's important that it's only in medical emergencies and nothing else. If you've got health insurance, you need to make sure that that health insurance covers all eventualities. Now that um, 
uh, Brexit has taken place. So these are a couple of more uh, things that you need to make sure that you undertake a few more checks uh, and ticks that you need to do prior to traveling to Europe because the rules uh, are totally going to change um, and we don't know what the position is. Um, family members, traveling family members as well, your passports, they need to have a minimum of six months validity on them. If they don't have six months validity on them, then you may be refused entry. So it's important to make sure that you have uh, the relevant uh, expiry dates, uh, etc. The last thing you want to do is book and try to travel and be refused uh, entry into the country. Now, if you're traveling between the countries, just uh, expect a bit longer time for you to be checked into the countries. Previously, you'd be free to roam uh, through the countries, but at each border, uh, you may be stopped, there may be questions asked. So you need to be prepared and just give yourself this extra bit of time in order to ensure that, uh, number one, uh, you've got the evidence to back up that you've got enough money to stay in the country, you've got enough money to get out of the country, you've got a return ticket if you have got a return ticket or you've got evidence to show that you're staying in uh, hotels etc and you're planning on coming back to the United Kingdom within a time frame because if you don't show um, those to a reasonable standard then you may be refused entry into the relevant countries. Now I think um, that's the general uh, issue of Brexit uh, covered down there. Uh, I've aimed to cover the fact that the the different uh, uh, types of insurances that you may need, the fact that there are some adjustments to your motor vehicle that you will need to do the to make an application for the settled and the pre-settled status. If you're traveling for longer than 90 days, you need to be applying, making an application for a visa for that country. You're not able to freely go there and do business or uh, work in the European countries. You need a specific visa. Uh, and these are all the perks of the post-Brexit uh, uh, state that we're in. Now, I think we'll move back to uh, the previous issue that we were dealing with and we were dealing with your rights and entitlements in a police custody. And previously, I've already discussed to you the fact of the fundamental rights that you have available to you if you are ever spoken to uh, by the police. Now, if you are ever spoken to by the police, the rights in a nutshell are number one, to have free and independent uh, uh, we'll just be going to um, a short break now. <laughs>